Following on from our introduction to BCI DSS, we are now going to focus on the 12 technical and operational requirements, along with the six control objectives, which all organizations processing payment cardholder data must comply with. For each requirement, we will explain what the purpose is, and will provide some examples of the controls that you will need in order to meet the requirements. The PCI DSS identifies 12 requirements clustered into six related control objectives that are designed to protect the account data. These control objectives are designed to provide context for each requirement and are as follows. One, build and maintain a secure network system. Two, protect cardholder data. Three, maintain a vulnerability management program. Four, implement strong access control measures. Five, regularly monitor and test networks. Six, maintain an information security policy. Both requirements 1 and 2 are intended to help you build and maintain a secure network. Firewalls allow control of network traffic between trusted and untrusted networks. And so requirement 1 contains controls for restricting network traffic, something which is at the very core of a secure network. Controls like justifying the firewall rules, anti-IP spoofing, default deny all settings, specifically authorizing inbound and outbound traffic. In essence, this requirement is all about ensuring that devices other than firewalls are configured securely, devices such as servers, desktops, laptops and mobiles. And the controls are similar to requirement 1 in that they focus on secure configuration standards and ensuring that devices only have functionality that is required for their use. Requirements 3 and 4 are both included to help protect cardholder data, and so requirement 3 includes a large number of controls on how you should encrypt cardholder data when it's stored. Due to the nature of encryption technology, this is actually a complex requirement and why it starts with the sound advice, if you don't need it, don't store it. Requirement 4 includes controls which are designed to protect the cardholder data while it's being transmitted, including controls such as always use strong cryptography, always secure wireless networks, and restrict the technologies that are used to transmit cardholder data to a minimum. Requirements 5 and 6 are designed to help maintain a vulnerability management program. Requirement 5 is entitled Protect All Systems Against Malware and Regularly Update Antivirus Software, which doesn't leave much to the imagination. It includes controls focused on deploying, using and maintaining anti-malware wherever you can. Requirement 6 focuses on two areas, patch management and secure software development. It provides controls on the frequency of patching as well as on developing software securely, including, for example, using secure coding standards, code reviews, developer training, web application firewalls, and many, many more. Implement strong access control measures covers requirements seven, eight, and nine. Requirement seven is all about the administrative side of access control. It contains controls around clearly defining who has access to what, using best practice, and commonly used principles like need to know and least privilege. Requirement eight focuses on the technical side of access control and includes a large number of controls that are designed to restrict users' access, such as password length and complexity, multi-factor authentication, no shared accounts, accountability, and traceability of users' actions. Requirement 9 focuses on restricting physical access to cardholder data, specifically controls such as facility entry controls, visitor procedures, controlling access to physical media such as USB drives and paper records. Requirements 10 and 11 are under the regularly monitor and test networks control objective. So requirement 10 is probably the most difficult as it involves collecting and monitoring logs from all devices in scope. All these logs need to be stored and analyzed for security events, which then need to be alerted and followed up on with an incident management process. This requirement is resource intensive, as you are required to perform regular vulnerability scanning and penetration testing, either by qualified in-house staff or external parties. It involves quite a bit of budgeting and planning and includes controls such as intrusion dissection or intrusion prevention systems and change detection systems. Finally, requirement 12 is the only one under the final control objective, maintain an information security policy. It covers all the policy and procedure documentation required, including annual risk assessments, security awareness training, third party due diligence, and incident response plans. If you have knowledge of the ISO 27000 series of standards, you will already be familiar with the kinds of requirements here. How can URM help? 
As a PCI QSA organization, URM can help you in a number of ways, including defining the most appropriate assessment scope, delivering a PCI gap analysis, determining the most appropriate SAQ, and reduce where necessary the scope of your cardholder data environment. With implementing and developing various controls, and all the way up to completing an SAQ or conducting a full QSA assessment.